An equation is any statement that has an equal sign, an equal symbol, appearing in it as part of the original problem. What we would want to do with an equation is eventually solve it. That is, we want to find out what specific number or numbers could be put in place of the variable letter in order to make that equation statement a true statement. Now, in the event that they've given us a number to try, as is the case in this first example, lucky us. 7p minus 3 equals 18 is the equation that's provided, and they have specifically said, let's try out p equals 3 to see if that would work. Which means that we want to go ahead and take the p, replace it with the specific number that they've given us, and see if the statement will work out to be a true statement. My suggestion to you, when you replace the letter, put the number inside a set of parentheses to better guarantee that you have not made a mistake. Now, we would want to know, does 7 times 3 minus 3 end up equaling 18? Well, start out with the 7 times 3 gives us 21. 21 minus 3 gives me 18. So, yes. We have something that works in this particular equation, meaning that we have specifically P equals 3 is the solution to the equation 7p minus 3 equals 18. Now, of course, they're not going to always give us numbers to try, so we need to be able to come up with these solutions on our own. However, this particular example illustrates that once we have found what we think is our answer, we can check it and go through those steps to make sure that we do, in fact, have what is correctly the solution. In order to solve equations, we need to be able to move pieces of that equation around and get the variable letter by itself. You can think of this as the equal sign means same. So whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, you must do the same to the other side. Or another way of thinking of it would be like a balance, like the scales of justice. So for instance, the scales of justice, they start out equal. And we can either put things on, but we must do so on both sides to keep the balance. We can take things off, but again, we must do so on both sides to keep the balance, which is what all this fanciness here says. In an example, x minus 13 equals negative 5, the x is immediately followed by a minus 13. In order to get rid of that so that the x will be by itself, I need to do the opposite of minus 13. The opposite of minus 13 would be to start with that equation and add 13. I must do so on both sides of the equal sign in order to maintain the balance. I will have the x now completely by itself. On the other side of the equal sign, negative 5 plus 13 is equal to 8. I have what I think is the correct answer, but I would want to check this, like the previous example suggested. So I would take the original equation and I would put in place of the x the 8 that I believe is the correct answer and check to see 8 minus 13 equals negative 5, yes or no? Well, that is a yes. So we have our solution, which is x equals 8. Well, we can also move pieces around through multiplying and dividing. Our goal would be to move things 
so that we are undoing the way that they are connected. In this next example, 5q officially means 5 times q. So I have multiplication that is connecting the 5 with the letter q. I need to undo the multiplication. So we could say that we've got times 5, and we need the opposite, which would be divide by 5. So, to divide by 5, well, we're going to have the 5q, and we put in the divide by 5. We have the equal sign and the negative 7 over 4, where we, and just for the sake of room, we divide by 5. Well, that means that what we really need to look at is the negative 7 over 4 times 1 over 5. We multiply straight across, and it seems that the answer we should be getting has q equal to negative 7 over 20. Now, if we think that's our right answer, we would want to make sure to check that. And if we check that, we do in fact find that this will work out correctly. So our solution, q equals negative 7 over 20, is in fact correct. We can move pieces around that are fractions as well, and I know that everybody loves fractions. So let's take a look at this one so that we can come up with a good way of dealing with any problem that might look like this next example. Officially speaking, when we read this, we can read it as negative 5 over 3 times w. So, we could say that we have negative 5 over 3 times. We want to do the opposite, and the opposite is officially divide by negative 5 over 3. Well, if we think back to dividing with fractions, we said that we can rewrite those division problems so that what we really would have is multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiplying by negative 3 over 5. And that would end up giving us a much quicker way of working through the other steps in our problem. So negative 3 over 5 needs to be multiplied on the left side of the equal sign. And negative 3 over 5 needs to be multiplied on the right hand side of the equal sign. If we go through our steps for simplifying, multiplying straight across, and being able to do some reducing here, means that with a 5 on top and a 5 on the bottom, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 25 five times. We seem to be getting an answer, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Down on the bottom, 1 times 7 is 7. So it would seem that W is equal to negative 15 over 7. If you take the time and trouble to check that, you will find that that is in fact the solution. That is the correct answer to our equation.